Morning guys. Uh, this is one of my paintings. Just wanted to start you off by showing you that. I got a number of them with the blinking light kind of thing going on. Uh, another one up there. They kind of embody a lot of jazz and the feeling of jazz. Um, I also want to show you something I'm working on right now. And if you look closely, you'll see things like the Swing Arrow Bar, Jazz City, Bebop. There's the Prestige Club, Blues, the Half Note. Something I kind of enjoy doing is creating these gritty old uh, city scenes to kind of really uh, capture jazz when I listen to it. So I just want to show you some of that art. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? Uh, Dan, Jazz Shepherd here. Uh, I've been trying to make an episode every day lately uh, just to help people get through. Enough people have commented saying they appreciate the distraction. It's the least I can do. I got plenty to share. Um, if it's too much for some people, I apologize. Uh, I know it's going to be hard to keep up for some people, but the material will always be there. At some point, I'll probably have to go back to work to do some catch-up financially. So maybe you can catch up at that point. But I got the time. I got the music. So for now, we're making a lot of episodes. Uh, I'm going to remind people to keep checking out my playlists. Because a lot of my playlists will call together similar themed uh, episodes. So you want to see on Verve or, or Columbia or whatever, those playlists will usually be very related to each other. Um, today we're talking the label Jubilee, another New York label. Uh, they're around from probably 55, 56, probably into the 60s. Uh, they also do a comedy spoken word series. They have a number of different kind of sets of record series. But they do a jazz series that's actually pretty fantastic. It starts off like 1004 or something like that and goes through to about 1105. So there's about 100 titles in there. I have about half of them. And a lot of the ones I don't have are going to be kind of that Dixie Revival stuff. Uh, I have most of the name brand hard bought players. The, the players I really love, I've got all their stuff on Jubilee. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and I'm going to show you quite a few titles here. Even though it's a dozen episode series, I'm going to show you a few other releases by artists. And I also want to show you at the end some of their great album covers. Towards the end, they started really doing uh, some great album covers with some risque women that, I, that you got to kind of enjoy. Uh, right now, we're listening to the great Donald Byrd and Gigi Grice. This is one of their Jazz Lab records. They do a couple on Columbia. This one on Riverside. This one on Jubilee is also fantastic. Um, I don't see the band listed here. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but this is a really solid record. Anytime you have a young Donald Byrd and Gigi Grice, you're going to have some pretty modern music taking place. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's in the same vein as a Blue Note. It's a... Uh, very solid stuff. Uh, the second, I have these books that are a series of printouts on ones on labels, discographies, and ones on the musicians and all their titles, their career discographies. And it was something I used to go shopping with because I had found that when I would go shopping, especially now that I do a lot of internet buying and auctions. When you've lost the record at auction a few times, it can be confusing when you're in a, in a retail environment going, did I win this or lose this? Do I have this? I don't know. I know I've definitely tried to buy this a few times, I, and I've made the mistake of buying stuff I didn't have. I mean, I made the mistake of buying stuff I already had, but to me that's not as much of a mistake as not buying something you don't have, which kick yourself for months if it's something really cool that you know you wanted and you didn't fucking grab it. Uh, but it was in those discographies where certain labels like Don and VJ 
and Jubilee popped up. And the Dollar Bird was one of the things like, oh, what Jubilee what label is that? And if it's just one or two records over the hundreds of artists, it doesn't really pique my interest too much for a label. But if five or six or seven artists that I like and know well have a, a, a record on that label, suddenly I have a half dozen titles. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. What else did that label do? Uh, Jackie McLean was the second guy who has tight records on Jubilee that piqued my interest. I'm like, oh. And uh, I believe it's this one is a reissue of Jackie's first record, which was on the Ad Lib label, tough record to come by. And so this Jubilee revert reissue of it is an easier find. Uh, but even here, young Jackie's got that fire, and you hear he's going to be a player to be reckoned with in the years to come in jazz. Another guy who played with Coltrane has a couple records on the Prestige and the New Jazz label and is one of the few tuba players in jazz, Ray Draper. And so this would have been another guy that I'm like, oh, Ray Draper's also got a record on Jubilee. Interesting. So jazz is not something you hear the uh, tuba in very often. I think Bill Barber was another tuba player who plays on the Birth of the Cool. And if I am not mistaken, Coltrane might be on this record. I can't remember. I know he plays with Ray Draper on something. But uh, it's a fun record. Uh, it's a bit of a precursor to the album covers with the women. You can see there's already the curves happening. They definitely use that to market and sell their records, much to my delight. I'm not discouraged by that whatsoever. Um, so another record that when I saw this in my discography, I'm like, oh, Jubilee has a Charlie Mingus record. And so once again, you're like, okay, there's another case of this label having an artist that I'm a fan of. This is obviously a bit of a beat up copy. I didn't remember this being so bad. But uh, this is Charles Mingus with Hampton Hawes and Danny Richmond, a trio record. And uh, I remember finding this at the store I found it in. It was pretty cheap. But uh, it's a little noisy. Let's see if the other side is bad. But uh, anyway, Hanson Hawes is a great little young piano player. A lot of kind of interesting uh, uh, takes on how to play. And then Mingus, of course, and Richard make of the percussion section. It's a cooking little record, you know. So we see Mingus between the Bird, the McLean, the, uh, the Mingus. Uh, they're doing stuff that's fairly contemporary with what's happening around them. Uh, this is probably 57, 58, 59, most of this stuff. Another great record, Teddy Charles with Oscar Pettiford, and Hal Overton. And so this would have been another one where I'm like, oh, I like Teddy Charles, I like Oscar Pettiford. We better find that one. And some of these records actually aren't that hard to find, and they're actually not that expensive. Uh, one of my favorite records on Jubilee is by Herb Geller. makes a couple records over at MRC before this and he's a great sax player he plays very much in the hard bop bebop tradition uh, it's very modern even hints of dissonance in that you, know, you hear Ellington and Monk and the ghosts of what's happening right there Nice spacing. Very cool record. It's kind of hard to see what it is. There's a saxophone kind of outline there. Uh, with some cat with probably sunglasses on. It's a cool piece of art. Beautiful. Uh, that statement when a player says, okay, I'm going to announce myself. The band breaks. And they say, yo, motherfucker, this is me. I'm always like that. 
Uh, that's another Herb Geller record. And again, you see the whole thing I'm talking about. The cheesecake that starts to take over Jubilee. It's not so prevalent early in the discography, but when you start getting 1170, 1180, up to, I mean, so 1070, 1080, up to 1115 or so, those last 20, 30 records, it seems like most of them have kind of cheesecakey covers. I'm going to show them to you at the end here, just because I think they're, they're worth the price of admission alone. Uh, this is the great Gene Harris. Uh, Gene Harris, of course, is a Blue Note fame with the three sounds. Then he makes a lot of solo records in the 70s and 80s. Ends up playing with Ray Brown over at Concord. Thank you, Jean Michel. Uh, he has two records here on the Jubilee imprint. 1005, which is one of the first releases. I think 1001 is the first, so this is the fourth release. And then 1115, which I think might be the last. So his record kind of bookend the Jubilee uh, jazz release sequence. Uh, he's a great bluesy player, plays very expressively, a lot of personality, and you hear over the course of his career how that blues and that virtuosity blend to become one of the great expressors on the, on the piano. He's a giant. People don't sleep on him, man. He's absolutely one of the great players in jazz history, Gene Harris. A great record here, Eddie Costa with the Vinnie Burke Trio. Vinnie Burke is a guy we saw over at Bethlehem with a 10 inch, and I think he had another full length. He plays bass on Jubilee Sessions. He plays has some records on the ABC label, which we're gonna see soon. Uh, Vinnie Burke's a great bass player. Eddie Costa, of course, is uh, an East Coast Italian descent piano player. Very sprightly, a lot of dance and juice to his style. He seems like a very happy player to me. Uh, reminds me of Billy Taylor at times. Although Billy Taylor was a chameleon, Billy Taylor could do anything. He's one of the one of the teachers. Billy Taylor is. But uh, Eddie Costa with Vinnie Burke Trio, great stuff. It's really great stuff. Kind of a cool uh, my grandma's basement art album cover. Uh, here's an album by Mike Cuso. And uh, they had the Vinnie Burke Trio back in him on this. He's a nice uh, sax player. I think he's a tenor player. I'm not even positive. Uh, I have him on Emerson as well, I believe. Uh, it's just a cool album cover. I won't hear the record once or twice, but I wanted to throw it in there because it's got the Vinnie Burke group in the background. And that always makes it kind of worthwhile right there. One of my favorite Jubilee records. And again, to me, favorite is often just simply how often you play something. And in my collection, stuff can go a long time without being played, but certain records kept making it into my work gig bags, my DJ bag. I kept bringing certain records to my job because this is good stuff to have a cocktail to. This is good stuff to have some scrambled to. Joe Puma, uh, another great East Coast Italian guy. Uh, he's also got stuff on Bethlehem as well. So these like smaller East Coast labels kind of share a lot of the white jazz players and they kind of play on each other's records on these little labels like Dawn, like Bethlehem, like Jubilee. It's a pretty extended little network of guys. Uh, it's great stuff. These guys are all great players. Puma only has four or five, maybe three records as a leader, but he shows up as sideman pretty much nonstop. Puma's everywhere. He's not Kenny Burrell everywhere, but he makes a lot of stuff. The great Art Blakey shows up here on Jubilee, and this is from the year 57. And in 57, if you watch my Art Blakey documentary, you'll see that's the year where they go from Columbia in 56, and they just jump around everywhere. Pacific, Jubilee, Bethlehem. They're on like five or six different labels in 57 and just make a prolific ton of stuff. And then they go back to Blue Note, where Blakey originally recorded, 
and they pretty much are a staple of Luna for the next 10 years. But uh, in 57, uh, Blakey makes a lot of cool records with cool art covers. With This is mostly going to be the, the Hardman, uh, is it Griffin? I don't like records that don't have the bands on the back. But yeah, it looks like it's Johnny Griffin's on this one with Bill Hardman. It's Jazz Messenger. You really can't go wrong with the Jazz Messengers ever. So now we're going to get into, uh, this is a really early one, 1009, the Jack Kelly Trio. You see they're already kind of using that female form. It's early in the sequence. It's a nice piano ballad record. Uh, I love this record. I think the album cover alone kind of sets the table for what you're going to hear, what you're going to experience. It's just kind of beautiful melancholy, you know. I don't know too much about the Jack Kelly trio. Uh, I did some research, and there was a Hollywood actor who played piano. Is this him? Anybody know? I'm not sure. Uh, all the same, some of these obscure jazz titles on these labels, there's not Wikipedia pages, there's not... Uh, you Google search them, there's not a ton of stuff that will pop up in a lot of these guys. And so you're kind of left hoping to glean stuff here and there. Uh, great stuff. Again, love Jubilee. Now we're going to talk about a couple singers on the label. I think we're actually going to do a few more than 12 here. Uh, I think we're at 10 now. But uh, I wanted to show you a few things. the great Ethel Ennis. Uh, there's some Billie Holiday in that. Some Nina Simone in that. I guess she was a Baltimore girl. This record is not cheap to find. It's got a second alternate cover where I think she's standing in, like a, in a warehouse parking lot or something. This is the first pressing with the pink uh, label. If you can see that. Boom. Uh, only the pink label exists early in Jubilee's discography before they go to the blue with the kind of spikes. So uh, I love her. Another record I played on my gigs quite a lot. Sometimes a record would get in my gig crate. I just can't take it out because I'm like, well, I've played that song three times. I need to play that song a more times. I haven't played that song enough. And so you really, some of these records are just like, you know they're omnipresent in terms of what you want to achieve in your gig. So if you ever see the Apple Annis record, do not hesitate. Eileen Woods. I like this record. I love the cover. It has a certain schmaltz to it. But it's also got jazz to it. Um, there's some string in there. I did a recent event in a, in a gala ballroom. And I started my night off by just playing this record for 20 minutes. And you just put that record cover out front. And these people are all dressed up in their ball mask. And it was just the perfect cognac. It was just like, it was syrupy. People just soaked it in and were loving it and were shazamming it. Whoa, what is this? It's so great. And uh, it's pretty obscure, kind of not name of any kind. But it also just has a certain elegance to it. And it doesn't have the gutty sorrow of the Billy Holidays and Nina Simone's. Because it's a white guy. So she can sing some songs. And they're going to be a little bit more. Darling, are you posh? Are your gloves and mittens clean? Shall we have a cigarette, darling? You know, it's just, it's just a little bit more uh, Hollywood film 50s vibe. Than, than the black musicians who have a depth to them that actually, even if you don't know, it can kind of weigh when you play it in a, in a live setting. Billy's not good time music. Billy's kind of shit's fucked up music. I love Luann Sims. Again, not a, not a gal I know extremely well, but uh, the song Separate Tables alone I've played that in my gigs quite a lot. It's a hint of country in there. I feel like David Lynch would love this. 
something Blue Velvet, Lost Highway, Mulholland Drive, his little gals doing the thing. But this is some Twin Peaks reboot. I don't know, that Twin Peaks reboot was tough, wasn't it? I gotta say, I didn't even get through it all. Tell me if I need to finish it, guys. Do I need to finish that Twin Peaks reboot? Because, man, the talking coffee pots and all that shit got a little bit crazy. Uh, this is Marianne McCall, another great little singer that Jubilee does a record with. And this has a great band, which is part of what's noteworthy. Jimmy Rainey, Teddy Charles, Mal Waldron, and Oscar Pettiford. Seriously? That's prestige jazz royalty, pretty much. You know, that's, uh, that's those are all real name people. So Jubilee has some really great stuff. And... Uh, I'm just going to now show you some cheesecake covers. Oh, no, sorry. I almost fucked up. These aren't cheesecake covers. Della Reese. Uh, we know Della Reese, of course, from Hollywood. You know, she appeared in a lot of movies and TV. But uh, she was a singer first and foremost. She, she makes a lot of records at ABC. But she also... Does some really great bluesy, uh, gospel-inflected uh, records here at Jubilee. A powerful voice, and you can hear her talking to Eddie Murphy about shooting his toe. If you ever seen Harlem Nights, if you ain't seen Harlem Nights, you should watch Harlem Nights because it'll give you a little insight into the personality of this gal. You know what I mean? Her girls, you gotta lock out for her girls. So I'm gonna leave Della play here. I'm just gonna show you. Some of the great cheesecake that kind of goes with this great little label. Jesse Powell, which is actually a great record, a great tenor player. It's kind of a bit of a, a soul jazz, powerful guy. Oh, you kid. Sammy Spear and his Rogues of Ragtime. Again, the Dixie Revival was happening at Riverside, at, at Jubilee, Atlantic had some stuff. Uh, she's gorgeous. I, I, you gotta look at that record at least once or twice. Music from Some Like It Hot, Lou McGarity Quintet. Some pretty obscure stuff here. Sunset Strip with Frankie Ortega. Lou Levy plays Baby Grand Jazz. She's grand, isn't she? The music of Jimmy Van Hoosen played by the Heartstrings, Moonlight Becomes You. More, a little bit of cheesecake on that one. Lester Crosley in the Heart of the Dark. Mo Kaufman, a Canadian clarinet player. The Shepherd Swings Again. Mo Kaufman, Cool Hot and Sax. So you can see that they loved a good looking gal to help them sell their records. And it, it challenges integrity on some levels to be using sex to sell products. But goddamn, we've been using sex to sell products since the first thing we ever sold. It's probably the first thing we ever did so. Uh, that is what it is. Jubilee's a great little label. I love it a lot. They got some really cool titles. I probably have close to 60 of the 105. Uh, it's just one of those things where I see them, when I stumble, when I shop and do a store on Discogs, I'll punch in Jubilee once in a while, I'll see if they got any of the titles I don't got. The ones I don't have never go for too much. Uh, even the Bird, McLean's, those Ray Drapers, They'll go 30, 60, 80 bucks at the most. Uh, most of these titles you can get from 5 to 15 bucks. It's good stuff. It really is. Even like the Mingus and the Teddy Charles records, those don't go for a lot of money. So, dig Jubilee. So, now that you know about them, when you see them, it's always worth a listen. The gal singers are all great. The album covers are always kind of sticky and fun. So, dig your Jubilee. I appreciate you all. Y'all be safe out there. I'm the Jazz Shepherd. Peace. I'm not